Hey guys, I just wanted to make a quick video to answer some questions about pizza making and I've been getting a bunch of questions about pizza making and I wanted to help you guys get good results in your ovens at home. Now here in New York, um, if you go to any pizza place you're going to find these Baker's Prides ovens uh, that are amazing ovens, they get really hot and they do a great job making pizzas and other uh, Italian food. Uh, the problem is we can't fit these in our kitchens. This is what we have in our kitchens. A little tiny oven like this. Um, so how do we get the same kind of results from um, a home oven that we can get from a uh, commercial pizza oven? And I'm going to give you some pointers on how we can do that sort of thing. Um, get as close to that big pizza oven as possible. Alright, for one thing, if we're making the flat Neapolitan style pizzas, it's a good idea to get some pans like this. And I have some links to these kind of pans on the bottom. Now these pans have holes on the bottom. These pizza pans allow air to get to the bottom and crisp up the bottom of the uh, dough on the pizza. Now they come in different sizes, different size holes and everything like that. And we even have things like pizza screens like these. And all of these work excellent for getting airflow underneath the pizza. If you're using one of these kind of pans with the holes in them, you want to make sure you're using the standard pizza dough that I have a video for and not the um, no need pizza dough. The no need pizza dough is too soft and it will um, rise through the holes and make the pizza stick to the pan. So um, you want to make sure you're using the standard pizza dough with this type of a pan. Now if you're using a pan that doesn't have holes in it or you're making say a grandma pizza or a Sicilian pizza, you can go ahead and use the no knead dough for that. Um, it works perfectly fine. It's wonderful with that type of a pan and that type of a pizza. But if you're making the flat standard Neapolitan pizza, you want to have the standard pizza dough for that type of pizza. Now the other thing that I think is pretty helpful is getting yourself a good quality pizza stone or bread stone. And I have links for these in the bottom of this video as well. Um, a stone is going to help evenly distribute the um, heat across the pizza and also in some cases uh, remove some of the moisture from the breads. Um, really a great thing to have when baking breads and you can have these stones double up. You can use them on your barbecues uh, like you see over here and um, so forth. And they come in different shapes. They're also round stones as well. Um, I've had both of them and they work excellent. Now one of the questions that we have if we want to use this in our oven is what rack do you put it on? And um, I've put it on multiple different racks and it also depends on what type of oven you have. I've tried even putting it directly on the floor when I had a gas oven and uh, that kind of burned the bottom of the pizza. Other placements I've had, the bottom of the pizza didn't get cooked enough. So what I do is I put it on the top rack and I put it on the top rack and I put the oven on a broil setting and what I do is I let the heat directly hit that stone and preheat that stone and that's a way that we can get our oven to provide us temperatures that is much higher than it normally can for the pizza. You see that stone is going to heat up to over 500 degrees now when we're ready to put the pizza in, we shut the broiler off and we put it on bake. Um, I have a convection oven, so I put it on bake for 450 degrees. And then I put my prepared pizza right on top of the stone. So again, what I do is I preheat the stone by putting the broiler setting on, getting it nice and hot shutting the broiler off when I'm ready to put the pizza in and then I um, put the oven on bake at, uh, somewhere around 450 degrees. I put my pizza directly on the stone 
and with the pan and um, when I'm doing more than one pizza like you see here what I'll do is I'll cook the first one while I'm preparing the second one and then when I'm ready to put the second one in I'll take the first pizza off the stone and put it on the bottom rack and I'll put the new pizza or the one that I'm putting in now on top of the stone and here you see I have two pizzas going and um, they come out really really delicious when I cook them I look for that cheese to be nice and brown and the bread to be nice and brown around the crust and it is nothing worse than that soggy dough on the bottom of a pizza so um, when you do it like this doing the way that I'm showing you here um, you're gonna get a nice brown toasty crust on the bottom of the pizza it's gonna be absolutely uh, wonderful and delicious Now for the next area I like to talk about is your ingredients. Um, one of the things that I've used is this roasted garlic extra virgin olive oil. You could use any really great quality olive oil and that makes a big difference to your outcome of your pizza. Now you also know another reason why I like to do a lot of this kind of cooking at home is because I like to try to get as much organic ingredients in as possible. Uh, in the foods that I eat and that I serve my family and um, one of the things I like is these um, organic diced tomatoes but when you're using diced tomatoes what I do is I put them in a colander first and try to get as much of the moisture out as possible moisture is the enemy of pizza making uh, makes your dough soggy so you want to get as much of the moisture out as possible And of course, you want to have plenty of um, chopped up garlic that you can put on top of your pizza. I love garlic, it's amazing. This is the flour that I use. Now I've been asked all kinds of questions. Should I be using bread flour, high gluten flour, um, all kinds of things like that. All purpose flour is what all the pizza places here use in New York. Um, they don't all use organic, hardly any of them do. I use organic. I like the organic flour. When I can get it, I'll get the organic flour. But I do like the King Arthur flours. I've used Hecker's. I've used Pillsbury Best. In fact, a lot of the pizzerias in um, New York use Pillsbury Best flour all-purpose flour not the bread flour um, it's just a helpful hint now if you follow these um, guidelines you're gonna have some amazing pizzas come out of your kitchen that I believe will far exceed what you get in a pizzeria um, and they'll just be amazing your family will just love it here you see a grandma pie that I made that has uh, half white and prosciutto and half um, just regular standard grandma pie. And I have to tell you, pizza is a great way to use some of those leftovers. Um, what I have here is a pie that's half grandma and um, half I have some uh, leftover chicken marsala that I've made. You can see the video for how to make chicken marsala. But if you have um, leftovers, you can certainly make a half and half pie and um, take those leftovers and make a brand new creation out of them that's absolutely delicious. And of course, here I have some of my uh, wine to accompany a pizza. It's always a great thing to have. That happens to be my black raspberry wine that I made with the raspberries I grew in my backyard. Um, totally amazing. You can see the videos on how I do the winemaking in uh, my channel over here. All right. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my video channel here on YouTube and check out my blog at www.cooking-italian-recipes.com for great Italian recipes, tips on organic gardening, winemaking, and uh, herbalism, and all other kind of fun stuff that I'm into. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Tell your friends. Take care.